This video is going to explore where the midpoint formula comes from. There are so many formulas in math, it's easy to get them confused, and sometimes it's hard to remember what the formula is or how you apply it. I'm a firm believer that if you know where the formula comes from, you stand a much better chance of remembering it and using it correctly. So before we talk about the midpoint formula, first let's just talk about the distance between two numbers on a number line. So let's say I ask you what the distance is between 3 and 8. Most of you probably wouldn't have to do any math for this. You would immediately tell me that that's 5. But the actual math that you're computing is probably 8 minus 3. Subtraction is going to give us that distance. Now what if we had put the 3 first and taken 3 minus 8? That wouldn't give us a positive 5, that would give us negative 5. So to rectify that, we take the absolute value and that ensures that our answer, which is a distance, will always be positive. So in general, if we have a line segment, a horizontal line, and we're interested in the distance between two points A and B, we can say that that distance is found by either taking the larger number, B minus A, or that distance would also uh, could be found taking the absolute value of A minus B. So the order doesn't really matter as long as you take the absolute value to ensure that your answer is positive. But what I want you to really note here is the importance of the subtraction. It's the subtraction that's giving you the distance in between these two numbers on a number line. Now we're ready to look at the midpoint formula and where it comes from. So if you look at the coordinate plane, now we're on the xy axis. We're interested in finding the middle of a line segment. So, let's take a look at my first coordinate, and we want to generalize here. So let's just call this first coordinate x sub 1, comma y sub 1. And then the other endpoint of that line segment, let's call that x sub 2, comma y sub 2. They're just unknown x and y values. Okay, so the point that we really want is this point right in the center. So give it a name. You could call it x sub 3, y sub 3 if you wanted to. I'm going to get out of using x's and y's, so I'm just going to call it a, b. And that's what we're looking for. Our ultimate goal here is to find what the coordinate is of that point a, b. So we want to find the coordinate a, b. So we're going to do this by utilizing a little geometry. So what we can do is come straight across and down and create a triangle. And if we do that again, you'll notice we're creating two triangles. More importantly, they're right triangles. These are two right triangles. In addition to them being right triangles, they are actually congruent. They're the exact same size. If two triangles are the same size, that means that the sides of the triangle are the same size as well. So this base of the first triangle would be equivalent to the base of the second, and the height of the first triangle is the same as the height of the second. So let's label on our x-axis some, some values. This first tick mark would be the x value, x sub 1. This tick mark in the middle would be the value a, and my third tick mark would be the value x sub 2. So what I want us to find is this distance, the horizontal distance, the base of the first triangle. Well, that would actually be the distance from x sub 1 to a. We just talked about that. We would subtract to find out that distance. So that would be a minus x sub 1. You could put absolute values if you wanted to, but since I'm starting with a, which is the larger of the two values, I don't really need my absolute value. Then let's do the same for the second triangle. I want to note his base. That's the horizontal distance. So that's the distance between a and x sub 2. That would be x sub 2 minus a. But what do I know about these two quantities? I know they have to be the same length. So I'm going to set them equal to one another. a minus x sub 1, the first base of the first triangle, should be equal to x sub 2 minus a, the base of the second triangle. So what I've created here is an equation, and I'm really interested in solving for a, because a is the coordinate of the midpoint. It's the x-coordinate of the midpoint. So that's what we're going to do now, is solve for a. So if I add a to both sides, I'll end up with 2a. 
and then I can add x sub 1 to the right hand side. So right now I have 2a is equal to x sub 2 plus x sub 1. And finally, if you solve for a, dividing by 2 gives us a is equal to x sub 2 plus x sub 1, all divided by 2. So again, what this is, this is, going back to our picture, this is the x value of the midpoint. And what are you really doing if you're adding up the x values and dividing by 2? You are averaging. So you just took an average, the average of the x values. And that's how we got the midpoint if you're on the coordinate plane, the x and y axis. In other words, you're not just looking at the horizontal distance or the vertical distance because our line segment in the original problem was actually at an angle. Then we could do the exact same thing with these two triangles for the heights of the triangles. Same exact work, only we'd be working with y values. And you'd find that you also have to average the y values. So to sum it all up, you now have your midpoint formula. So if we are looking for the midpoint, I'll abbreviate, if we're looking for the midpoint of a line segment, you're going to take the x values, add them up, and divide by 2, which is averaging the x values, and then you will take the y values, add them up, and divide by 2, and that's the average of your y values. There's your midpoint formula.